Today in your Geek Fix, we're going to show you a paint application that will help you to make ordinary plastic look like real brushed metal. But first, this is your Geek Fix. On our last episode, we used this DIY kit to make this Iron Man arc reactor. And while I liked the black base, it looks pretty good. At the same time, it's not movie accurate. In the movie, it appeared to be a brush metal. So what I wanted to do in this episode is take that black base and turn it into what looks like and feels like real brush metal. Now there's plenty of ways to do this out there and I will say that a lot of them look all right. I want something that looks and feels realistic. So what I'm gonna be showing you today is a fast and easy application that will make it look and feel like real brush metal. Now, the first problem that I've got is we did put it all the way together. So for that reason, um, this has to be completely disassembled from the base. If I could go back in time, I, uh, I would not have uh, put it all together. I would have painted it while the base uh, wasn't on there. So, First thing I'm gonna to have to do is take this all apart. I will say that the wire is hard to take out. So the way I'm doing it, I'm taking a, I'm taking apart part of the wire and then I'm screwing off the uh, arc reactor itself. And uh, that way I can uh, have just this base. And so here we have just the black base now. So the problem with this is, of course, I've got a little bit of the cable still sticking out. So I'm gonna have to tape that off first. And then I uh, am ready to paint at this point. So the thing that we're gonna do first is we're going to take some sandpaper and we're going to sand this, but we're gonna sand it in one direction and, and as, as straight as I possibly can. The reason for that is I do need the paint to stick to this, but I also want to start to create some of that three-dimensional effect in advance and also create some grooves that uh, when, I, when I start wiping things later on um, will allow some black to show through. So we're gonna take this sandpaper and we're going to just smoothly straight across make those lines as smoothly as I can. So I'm going fairly slow, but I can also go faster as long as I'm going in that same direction. I will warn you too, uh, this process it can be very messy, so you wanna watch out where you're doing it. So now we've got it all sanded. It's ready for our first layer of paint. If this wasn't black already, I would be spraying one layer of either a black or dark gray primer just so that we have something that will show through. But in our case, we already have this black base, so I don't have to do that. Um, I'm gonna jump straight to the color I'm gonna be using, which in this case is uh, a metallic paint binds with wood, metal, craft, foam, and more. So uh, I'm gonna be using this at least for two layers. As we apply this, we're gonna be going from left to right. Uh, when I usually spray, each time I'm pushing on this top rather than just holding it down and spraying back and forth. We wanna make sure it's even, covers all of our sides pretty well. Pretty much as soon as you've sprayed it, it is already starting to dry. This paint dries pretty fast, so for that reason, uh, we can start doing the next step right away. I'm going to now use this brush that I bought from the dollar store and I'm just going to be scraping across one line at a time as straight as I can. Now in the past I've used other brushes that are a little bit more square and, and solid that I can follow a long ruler with even. Uh, it just depends on how much you want to try to freehand it. I'm trying to freehand it here and I will say around this little neck piece, it is a little bit hard for me to, uh, to be able to be straight. Um, but again, if I would have done this before I had to tape that area off, uh, it probably would be much smoother. So I'm gonna also make sure I'm going around the edges. And then on the sides, I'm gonna be dragging just straight across. And uh, as you can see, we're already starting to get that pattern going. Um, then what I can use 
is one of these wipes here. Uh, I've let this one start to dry a little bit just so that it doesn't completely wipe off the paint. So I'm gonna now wipe off all of those little particles that we're gonna need to get rid of before we actually uh, paint it again. Once when that's pretty well dry and clean, now I'm ready to spray it again. So we put on another layer of that metallic color and brought it back in and again with the brush going straight across. And then I'm going to use my cloth again. And as I'm wiping it off, I also want to make sure that I'm going in the same direction as that sandpaper. So it's nice and clear. I can actually even polish it up a little bit now. Once when I get it to where I like it, which I, I like the way that it's starting to look now, um, then I can spray it with a finish. In this case, I've chosen a matte finish. Uh, that's because this isn't gonna be that shiny. I will say too, sometimes these finishes will actually dull uh, metallics anyways. And uh, so I'm gonna just spray this on very lightly. You also might wanna test out your matte finish beforehand to make sure that uh, it doesn't affect your metallic paint in such a way that it'll cause it to gloop or, or have, have little holes or dots. And that's it. Just like that, I can put everything back together again. It looks pretty good. That looks, um, that looks exactly the way that I wanted it to. It really does look like brushed metal. And now I'm ready to put back on my box. This is not my favorite box, by the way. Uh, this is the plastic version. I've actually purchased uh, from China a glass version that might eventually get here. So <laughs> testing it out now. And there it is. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. These are the kinds of videos that we make. Subscribe to the channel and click on that reminder bell so you don't miss out on future videos like this Nuka Cola gun or the Pip Boy 2000 that we did. Like, subscribe, and comment below. This is your Geek Fix.